What is this thing? Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Laugh and Loon Fishing. Uh, you're probably wondering what's with the hat. Well, let me tell you, it's my celebration hat. It's uh, it's my hat that I wear when it's cold outside, like really cold outside. And it has been cold outside for the last couple days. And Lake Simcoe has finally got enough ice to get my big butt out on there, hopefully. <laughs> um, and also the hat is hiding my receding hairline, which is uh, a lot better for you and the viewers. So, um, goal tomorrow, we're gonna go out on Lake Simcoe, we're gonna target whitefish, and uh, hopefully get one. <laughs> I'm on year three, three of a skunk run. I don't even know if I can call it a skunk run. These fish are my nemesis fish, the white fish. I've never ever caught one. I've put some hours into trying to get them and it just drives me up the wall that I haven't gotten one yet because um, apparently they're so stupid, they're slow, they're the late cows and easy to catch for a lot of other people. But there is a technique to it that I just haven't quite got yet. White fish, oh, fingers crossed, jeez. Um, so I'm down here in my fishing room, getting all my gear ready, prepping, doing what I gotta do, making sure I got everything tied properly, retied, cinched down tightly, and uh, make sure all the gear is good to go because I hate that to be an excuse for me not to get another white fish. Gear is something that you can prevent from mishaps beforehand if you take care of it. So that's what, we, that's what I do every time before I go fishing. I make sure all my gear is in tip top shape. And um, yeah, let's get out there. Let's get a whitefish this year. Let's beat this skunk. And I want you to come along with me and see how I do it and see the celebration. Now, most people do this to the camera and cut to the next scene, but I'm laughing loon fishing. So here we go. Woo! here we got it I've already well I already caught a little fish a little Cisco I think it is that would be my first so I'm hoping that the Cisco or herring or I'll look into that a little later on um I don't know what all the fish look like out here so <laughs> I'm still learning myself but listen besides the point we're out here we're surprisingly I'm on four and a half inches of ice right now it's fairly good ice as well um, but the problem is is we spotted through three inches over there Another guy set up on six inches over there. Buddy was maybe 50 yards away from me. He set up on five inches. So the ice is inconsistent. There's no consistency whatsoever to this ice. So if you do come out, when you come out, use extreme caution. Bring your picks, spud your way out, and safety in numbers. Always have a buddy system. But anyways, we're out here, and we're fishing, and we're marking tons of fish. Pretty much all small, small fish. We haven't really called any. I might have called in one white fish already, um, but uh, I just set up my white fish rod. Good old Meigs teaser hook on top, and uh, hopefully we get into them. Stay tuned. Today's segment is brought to you by Chocolate Milk. Does the body good? Needs the calcium. Got a Cisco. So what I've been taught is, um, or what my technique is, or what people have been telling me, because I really don't know the technique yet, bottom line. I get the Meigs right down to bottom. 
get right on bottom like just so the line goes slack and then slightly lift that baby just so the back end of it lifts off the ground now what that does it imitates a fish that's you know this is a flat bottom the fish's tail is going to be up like this going to imitate a feeding fish because you're giving it slight little jigs to make that go up but that's also creating a sediment cloud and that calls the fish in the beautiful thing about sediment clouds is the fish can't quite see what's in it you know if you're doing it properly um, they just see something moving and they hammer it. It's more of a reaction than it is uh, let's inspect and see what's happening. But with the Migs, about 15, 16 inches above, I have, I call them, I don't know, teaser hooks or cheater hooks or whatever with just a, a, a little, um, like, fluke-like bait on there. Oh, there's a fish with me right now. Come on, baby, hit it. Oh, I missed one! Missed it, Biggie! I felt him tug! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I just had my chance! Okay, so what I was trying to do before was show you how to catch a white fish. And it's kind of funny how that works because I was explaining how to catch a white fish. And a fish came in and hit me and yet I still didn't catch it. Laughing loon fishing, guys. I'm a loon. Coming in, BB. The zipper's on the inside here. There we go. Yeah. There he is! Yes, buddy. Way to do it. We'll keep that on the deal. Oh, it's such a beautiful sight and sound. You know what? They're on the bottom, but they don't come. They have to lift it up. Like I always Slow do. lift, eh? They lift it up, and then they come up, and you just give a little, 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 and then... Yes. Well, let's get some more, buddy. Well done. Come on, boys! Oh, slow rise. Thank you, John White. Oh, I'm off! Now, I set this up for perch, but today I feel like it's doing the job for whitefish. Oh, come on. A little lipless. I removed the back treble and put a single hook with a bead. Now, the beautiful thing about this bead is that it slides nice and easy. So when a fish and it's on a, so when it when a fish hits this. This actually slides out of the way. Now, is that the reason why I lost that fish? You tell me, please. 